our solar system. So in this image here, you have an inaccurately scaled formation of our solar system. But just to give you an idea, this chapter really gets you thinking about why do the planets in the outer solar system have different features than the planets on the inner part of the solar system. So let's look at our planets. So all planets orbit in the same direction and in the same plane, pretty much. So our terrestrial planets are what we call the four inner planets. They're smaller in diameter. They have high average densities. They're composed of rocky materials. This is different than our outer planets, the Jovian planets, also sometimes called the gas giants. These planets are larger in diameter, they're lower in their average density, and they're composed of lighter elements, like gases such as hydrogen and helium, and various forms of ices. So to understand the origin of our solar system, it's important to understand the key properties of our solar system. So as you think about the two different groups of our planets, you'll see that the size and the composition of the terrestrial and Jovian planets are different. But the direction and orientation of the orbits of the planets are all the same. And then when we look at the size of the orbits, you'll see that the terrestrial planets have smaller orbital sizes and those Jovian planets have larger orbital sizes. So where do these solar systems start out? They start out in molecular cloud regions or nebular cloud regions, okay, something like this. This is the area of star formation. So this theory, um, I have hypothesis written on here, but really it's the nebular theory at this point, um, is the idea that our solar system and other solar systems that we're seeing are formed in nebular gas regions, something like the Orion Nebula. These nebular regions are regions of star formation and thus also regions of solar system formations. So in this image here, you see a star being formed and around that star is this gassy, dusty region called a protoplanetary disk. And from this gassy, dusk disk is where our planets, we believe, are formed. And we see this in solar systems beyond our own solar system. Notice that this one here is about the size of our own solar system. So our solar system, so what's it made out of? Hydrogen, helium, as well as some other elements like carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, gold, uranium. Okay, and that all came from the interstellar medium. So the interstellar medium is this diffuse amount of gas and dust that fills the spaces between the stars. But when those areas of gas and dust become lumpy, they form those nebular cloud regions. So stars create heavier elements through nuclear fusion, which then populates this interstellar medium with all these heavier elements. And it's from the decay of elements that we're able to estimate the age of our solar system using a form called radioactive decay. So from that, we're able to predict that our sun began forming about 5 billion years ago. Okay, so the age of our solar system is about 5 billion years. So this hypothesis for the formation of our solar system is that this nebular cloud region started to condense, contract, and spin. And as it does this, gravity really starts to take over, okay, and it's pushing the gas in, and it's causing the center of that gas to really start to heat up. And that's where the protostar forms, down here in number two. As this gas of gas and dust ball starts to rotate and condense inward, it starts to flatten like a pancake. So you can imagine the protostar is a big blueberry, and the big disk and um, gas and disk gas and dust disk okay, is flattening out like a pancake. So the internal pressures get very high and it really starts to get hot because those gas molecules are being pushed together more and more and more. Okay, So as they get pushed together, okay, they start to heat up. And this begins the protostar. So it's not a star yet. We call it a pre-star or a protostar. This disk of gas and dust continues to flatten. And then finally, once it gets hot enough in the center, thermonuclear reactions can happen. Once that happens, the star is officially turned on and that protosun becomes a sun. Then that sends out waves of solar winds, blowing out a lot of the gas and dust. The remaining gas and dust condenses and forms the planets. Okay, that's the kind of very basics of it. So the angular momentum, okay, is what causes the 
the gas and the dust and the disc to flatten and continue rotating. So let's take a moment to watch this video. Okay, so go ahead and click on the link and watch the video and then come back to the lecture slides. Okay, so this proto sun. The proto sun is just a pre sun. So it's occurring because of the gravitational collapse of gas. So that fast moving material runs into each other and as it runs into each other, it heats up and creates thermal energy. So you can imagine as those gas particles get clumped closer and closer together, they hit each other more and more, creating more and more thermal energy. And that causes the temperature to rise inside the, the, inside the protosun. And those nuclear reactions begin in the interior once it gets hot enough. So gravity is continually collapsing this protosun in until the nuclear reactions happen. Those reactions then are able to push out on gravity and stop the contraction. And that allows the sun or any star to settle at its size, okay? So the inward pressure pushing out from the thermonuclear reactions is counteracting the gravitational pressure pushing in, which keeps the star at its um, size, okay? So our sun settles on the surface at about 6,000 degrees Kelvin, which is equivalent to about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we are able to see these protoplanetary disks and protostars forming in other regions um, of our universe, okay, outside of our own solar system. So this was one of the first images taken of an extrasolar planet, okay, or extrasolar planetary disk um, called Beta Pictoris. This is in 1983. So what you're seeing here is the star itself is blocked out by this covering, okay, but what we're able to see is this disk of gas and dust, and this is one of the first indications that indeed a protoplanetary disk is forming around a star. In 1998, we got a little bit clearer of a picture with Hubble Space Telescope, okay, and we're able to see that some of these planetary disks are huge, okay, notice bigger than the size of Pluto's orbit, okay, so we're starting to get more images. Each of these is a pre-solar system, okay, it's a sun surrounded by a disk of glass and dust. These are young stellar disks. So we're seeing that our solar system is really not that unique. And in fact, we're seeing solar systems formed all over the place. But really, as we find more solar systems, we're able to learn more about how our own solar system formed. So we're really excited by finding more of these other extrasolar systems um, because they tell us and give us hints to how our solar system might have been on early on, okay? Gives us a clue to the formation of our own solar system. So this nebular hypothesis, this nebular theory is constantly being revised as we learn more about other planetary disks. Okay, so stop and take a moment to think about this conceptual question. The protosun came to a full-fledged star when what happened? All right, hopefully you answered thermonuclear fusion reactions begin in the center, okay? So it's not just that the temperature would rise, okay? That's what's happening in the protosun, okay? But when the protosun becomes a full star, that's when thermonuclear fusion actually begins. So within this disk of gas and dust, we have what we call the condensation sequence. So what this says is that in the inner red area here, okay, all the elements close to the sun are hotter. All the elements further from the sun are cooler. So what this says is that the materials in here, okay, as because they're closer to the sun, only materials that can condense at really high temperatures will do so. So that means the inner desk is gonna see things like irons and rocks and silicates, but things like ices and gases can't condense being this close to the sun, being this hot but instead they can condense further from the sun where it's a lot cooler. So out in the outer ring here, we can see the formation of icy particles and gassy particles. So you can start to see that there's a clear delineation here between what can condense at hot temperatures and what can condense at cold temperatures. So the inner planets are made of materials which condense at hot temperatures, those rocks, those irons, those silicates, and the outer, outer planets are made of materials which can condense at colder temperatures. And this really shows you the distinction between the two groups, the terrestrial and the Jovian planets. So here's a nice graph to really show this temperature distribution in the solar system. 
So we have temperature on the y-axis increasing at the top. Okay, so this is in Kelvin, degrees Kelvin. And at the, at the origin here would be the sun. So the distance outward from the sun moving to the right on the x-axis, okay, in astronomical units. So if we had our sun here, notice that it's the hottest near the sun, then we hit our inner planets, Mercury through Mars, and then our outer planets, Jupiter through Neptune and beyond, those trans-Neptunian objects. So this is saying that as the temperature decreases, okay, you get farther and farther from the sun. When the temperature is really hot, you're close to the sun. So we have our inner planets divided by our outer planets. At this point, right before Jupiter, is what we call the snow line or the frost line. And it's at this point that water can condense to form ice. So that's really that dividing line in that condensation temperature model, is that this snow line, or sometimes called the frost line, is the point that water can condense. So anything colder than that, that's when we can start to see water and gases start to condense and freeze in terms of ices. Okay, so here's just kind of a pictorial vision to show you. So remember, the whole disk is moving around, it's spinning, okay? And this yellow line is that snow line or that frost line. So everything past that, further from the sun, will be your Jovian planets, and anything within that will be your terrestrial planets. So this image, or this um, chart here, just gives you an idea of some of these kind of elements and minerals that are forming. So higher temperature, the metal oxides and the irons, those can condense. Okay, then we have our silicates. Notice way down here when it gets colder, where our Jovian planets are, we can start to have water and ammonia and methane, those can start to condense. So when we talk about ice in the solar nebula, um, really when we talk about ice and astronomy, it can be not only water ice, but ammonia ice, okay, methane ice. Ice can mean a lot of things in astronomy. Okay, just in one more example to show you here in terms of density, okay, so we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, these are our terrestrial planets, where they're more dense than our outer planets. And so here's where you can see that in terms of density, we have our irons and our nickels, okay? But we don't have our ices until much further out, okay? That's the point that those can condense. All right, just a little pictorial view for you of the interior of these planets and just kind of really drive this home that the interior planet or the interior of the inner planets, the terrestrial planets made up of mainly rock and metals and ices, we have these visible gases in our outer planet. So just take a moment to kind of look at this chart. So the terrestrial planets, we believe, formed from the accretion of what we call planetesimals. So planetesimals are just pre-planets, okay? Planets that are starting to condense and form. So the idea is, is that all this gas and dust is moving around in this disk, and it starts to clump due to gravity and they start to hit into things, right? So as a planetesimal gets bigger, it starts to hit other smaller pieces and condense those and coalesce into a bigger planetesimal till eventually it kind of sweeps out all the material in its orbit, forming finally the planets that we see in our solar system. And that's what we call the accretion of planets. So the planetesimals to planets. So we have the accretion for the terrestrial planets. The Jovian planets are mainly made up of ices, um, water, and methane. And there's a couple different ideas of how the Jovian planets formed. Um, some of the ideas say that the gas formed first, and then like a rocky materials gravitationally were pulled in. There's also some theories that the rocky part of the inner um, planet was formed first, and then forming the gases around it. There's also some theory of this migration, that the outer planets migrated inwards to collect some of the rocky material and then migrated back outwards where they were able to condense all of that gas and dust. We're still in the process of figuring out exactly how we think the Jovian planets collected and formed. So beyond our outer regions of the solar system, we have what we call the Kuiper Belt. And then beyond that, we have what we call the Oort Cloud. So the Kuiper belt is made out of things that we call trans-Neptunian objects. So things like rocky bodies, icy bodies, and then further out, we have this Oort cloud, which is made up of billions of comets. So our comets are coming in from this Oort cloud region, which is a spherical region around our entire solar system. So here's just another pictorial view to kind of show you the distribution of the planets. 
then this outer region here being the Kuiper belt. Okay, so just a final kind of pictorial view of the nebular theory. So the gases from that solar, from the nebular region condense and contract. They start to spin and flatten like a pancake. The center gets contracted more and more, okay, where that protosun can start because it's, it's protosun can begin. Heats up gets hotter and hotter until finally it gets hot enough that thermonuclear fusion can begin. Then we have this condensation okay, happening where the inner material condenses and the outer material condenses forming our two groups of planets. So here's a little animation you can watch on your own to just give you another visual um, look of this. Okay, so could you explain the formation of the early solar system? So take a look. Could you explain all the different stages of this image here? So take some time and think about it. All right, so here's just a little kind of answers, if you want to say, um, to see if you kind of were on the right track. All right, let's do it again. Can you explain the later formation of the solar system? Can you explain what's happening in these images? So pause the video and see if you can explain each image. All right, hopefully... This guides you a little bit if you were a little bit unsure. Okay, so let's end up with some concept questions. So which planet formed closest to the sun at temperatures below the freezing point of water? So below the freezing point. All right, good. Jupiter is the only planet in this list that formed below the freezing point of water. And if you need to do a refresh, go back and look at that temperature scale um, graph that I presented to you. All right, so you can go ahead and stop here and go ahead and work on that temperature of the solar system worksheet. That is your worksheet um, A, I think, for this week. All right? All right, enjoy!